In this video, you'll see how you can effectively use the reference page functionality from the content outlining tool. So first, we want to add a reference page. So we'll go to the outline designer, hit add content, and select reference page, and we'll mark it as seen. Now if I go into, or go back to the course rather, just the home page, you'll see we have sample. Sample doesn't do anything. Clicking edit on sample, you'll see there's a title, what it's referencing, and you still have the ability to hide it. Now if I start to type, it's not going to autocomplete with anything because I don't have anything I can currently reference. You can reference anything in the system that's part of a course marked a master. So let's see how we go about doing that. So we're going to go back to my profile. And we're going to go to albums to create a sandbox. So we're going to actually create kind of a central bank of resources is what this use case is. And so we'll call this internal resources. We're going to override our workflow and we're going to actually, we're going to actually you know, we'll keep that what it is for now just so we can show what it does. We're going to mark this closed enrollment only. This way it's not visible to the rest of the outside world. See we have our information here. If I actually move this down a little bit, you can see the path that's created. And the path becomes important here. To make this marked as a master so things can be referenced, you want to click version state. This has a color associated to what the version is. We're going to take this version and we're going to put it into a master state. Master is to imply that this is to be used across material or that it can be referenced by other courses and versions. We're going to do this immediately, and we're just going to hit save. You'll see by doing that, this turns gold. It says that it's in a master state, and the path reflects that it is a master. I'm going to go to lesson one and make this something more useful than just the title of lesson one. So we're going to call this orientation. I'm going to take this Put in a fun fact, imagine a standard orientation has been placed here. And then we'll hit save. So now we have a piece of content, it's called orientation, and it's in our internal resources. So let's go back to my profile. We're going to go into our hockey course now. So our hockey course is called Initial Creation. I just remember that so we can get there a little faster. We'll go into Sample, which is the reference material. We're going to hit Edit Content again. And then we're going to type O for Orientation. Now you'll see it starts to autocomplete with all the things that have an O in them. So if I start to type Orientation, it'll narrow it down. You'll see this is inside Internal Resources in the Content Outline and it's called orientation. I'm going to select that. Hit save. Now, you'll see this is actually pulled across the material that was in that reference page. This allows you to have materials that are dynamically linked back to a single source. If I go back and I update this orientation page, it will now make the change and update it here. So it's actually just reading directly from that page's material. Uh, this can be very useful in the case of standard language, such as orientation material. Um, maybe you have directions that you, you don't want to put in your course resources and applications area, but they're still standard. You can put them in here. Uh, in the future, this functionality could be used to actually make an entire course that's by reference, so that you actually have a master course, and then when you want to offer that master course, you would be referencing all of the material back to that central location. 